All right, so I got a uh, couple of four escape ECUs here uh, to go over. Um, this one I've already fixed, and I have it running um, so we can see what a good working ECU looks like. I don't know how well my camera is picking it up, but uh, here we have uh, coils 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the red ones are the injectors. Uh, the other stuff is not too important. But uh, I've got my old Tech uh, 2246 pulled out. Uh, I did have it put away on this shelf, but kind of missed it sitting on the bench. So I brought it back out and figured we would uh, use it for this demonstration. Uh, so this unit is working, like I said. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to check some of the uh, points for the coil system just so we can see what it looks like. This ECU right here is not working, so we can uh, compare them. All right, so there we have the control signal that is telling the uh, IGBT to turn on, and that is a good signal. We can see uh, we can see it coming high and go in low. So if we make this uh, time base a little smaller, you might can see it a little bit better. Okay, and it's trying to get it to, okay, so there's our signal there. You can see the uh, actual signal without it triggering. Okay, so that is good. Let's go to the next one. Okay, that one is also good. There, that one is also good. That one is good. Okay, that's another one. Uh, each of these are uh, 5 volt vision, so uh, if we wanted to see it a little bit better, I could turn it to 2 volts. Let's check the last two. Oh, I see it triggered on that one. Okay, there, there it is without it triggering. And we're going to check the last one. Okay, so all the control inputs are there. Now we're going to check the output. Uh, this is the output of the IGBT. It's going to my lamps here that are you know, pretending to be coils. Uh, but let's check our first one. And here we see a similar thing except it's reversed and uh, a lot bigger. So now I'm back to 5 volt vision. So that's like a uh, you know, 12 to 14 volt that's going to be your battery voltage. It's going up, but when the coil triggers, it comes down. So, like, if I was to plug in another uh, probe here, let's get second probe going. Okay. So now our first one is going to be on the output, and our second one will be on the input. Where's my second trace at? So I need to find it. There it is. Okay. So there is our input. Let's make it a 5 volt division. I'm going to put it right under this one. So now when the control signal tells it to turn on, you should see this bottom one go up. And at the same time, you should see this top one. Uh, being low here, meeting it. And that's how we'll know that it was on. So right now I just have the control going. Okay, so we do see exactly uh, that. It's kind of hard to see on this, <laughs> this old scope, but we see the control signal meeting the uh, pull down of the driver. So now we can go to the next one and we can just do that again, just for fun. And they're, they're, these are all functioning properly. Which, you know, uh, I already know because I have my little tester here. Now, uh, if you did not have something connected to the output of your driver, you wouldn't be seeing 12 volts because, you know, this gives out the ground signal. So you, you do have to have uh, something there to represent a coil. Okay, let's turn this one off and unhook it. Make the 
it's a little bit faster. Okay, so let's plug this one in and let's see what we have here. Okay, so um, according to my tester here, we have number four not working. Okay, so I'm going to take the top off. Uh, I haven't tested this one yet. I, I did open it, but I haven't looked at it. Um, I can visually see that coal foil has overheated a little bit. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, you know, definitely bad. Okay, let's check this one. This is actually number one. Okay, so that one is good. It's got the control signal. This one is, I believe, number three. They, they don't go in order here, so I'm trying to remember as I go. Okay, that one is good. Kind of hard to see. It's that fast. I cannot remember which one this is. I think that this is number five. Okay, that's looking good. Now this one is number four, and this one is number two. Let's go to number two first. Looks good. Number six. Obviously looks good. And here is number four. So on the output, we see only the high signal. That's the power, you know, coming from my tester. And it's coming through the lamp and coming here to the back of the driver. And it is not being brought low. So now let's check the uh, control side. And if we see the uh, bottom trace there, we see that it is present. The control to tell the driver to come on is there. It is just not coming on. So we can check the drain side here. And the drain side is low. So we have everything we need for this to work. And it's not working. So we know that this driver is at fault. Now, that's a pretty basic thing, you know, to know since we're looking at my tester with the lamps. But let's say, let's say you didn't have a lamp here. Okay, so let me pull these out. You don't have this fancy tester to test these. I'm going to leave the injector hooked up. But... So you could use a basic test lamp, and we're going to connect it to 12 volts. Okay, and then I'm going to come here. Okay, so it's the same principle, it's just now you have to do one at a time. So if we were to probe it now with our oscilloscope, you see it's low the whole time. So we have to give it a power there. Okay, and then we can actually see the signal being brought low. Now, um, I don't have my power supply isolated right now, so I, I don't want to connect my uh, scope to V12 volt. Well, you know what? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Maybe it will work. So if you wanted to check this without a power source, then you could do it by uh, putting your reference on 12 volts. And then you should see it being brought low. Let me see here. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to hook that to 12 volts. Let's cut number two off. And here now you see negative voltage. So we can see it coming on just from the uh, negative voltage there. It looks a little bit different. So I don't usually do it like this, but you could. And if we come here to the bad one, you'll see that it doesn't do that. All right. 
Let's go ahead and get it replaced. All right, I'm going to put my bulbs back in here. And let's see if it's going to work. Make sure I take my reference back off as well. Get it back on ground here. All right, got power on. Okay, and here it looks like it's working. We got one, two, three. Four, five, six, and we can check here. We can check our control. Looks good, and there is our output. Can't get it to trigger now, but that's okay. We can see it there. So uh, that is all that one needed. That one's uh, fixed up ready to get sealed up in fact i'm gonna put some uh, conformal coating on it well you know what i see this resistor uh, this current sense resistor i better change that it uh i bet you it's still good it's just that uh the package is a little bit damaged there from overheating so whenever I see that, I just change them. I just change them anyway, just to uh, make sure that it's not compromised. Because, you know, they have to deal with a lot of heat. And the package being damaged like that, it might, it might affect it. This particular ECU already has so many problems, it doesn't need more. I get a little flux there. Put this new one down. Okay, now we finish it with the uh, conformal coating. Because this ECU is under the hood, so there's a chance moisture could get in. You might 